everyone welcome back to the channel today i'm doing weekly update number three and i'll be going over the five design tips that i shared in my short form video so let's go ahead and get started here's top tips for designing models for filament based 3d printers number one design to the curves print with the layers instead of across the layers this prevents stair stepping which is what happens when the printer tries to make the layers fit a vertical curve okay so the first step is talking about uh, designing and the correct orientation, essentially. So I think a lot of people have trouble kind of conceptualizing this. So I'm going to take a little bit of time to explain it the best that I can. So I'm just going to make a basic rectangle and then extrude this. Actually, I'm just going to make a just a kind of bigger rectangle just to draw the point home. So depending on what way you orient your print, you'll get a lot of different effects as far as what your corners look like. So just to make this pretty obvious, I'm going to add a pretty big fillet on this side. And then on this side, I'm going to create a big chamfer. Okay. And so what I mean by you want your curve to be with the print layer. So this is a curve. And if we're printing, say this is the print bed. So we're printing it like this. You want the curve to be with the layers instead of the opposite, which would be if you printed the part like this. So I'm just going to export this real quick, show you all in the slicer what I mean by this. Okay, so I imported the file into the slicer. And so if we just click slice, you can see here that the print lines are with the curve, right? So the printer, since it's printing, you know, in layers, it can do curves in this direction really well. Because, you know, the print head is, if you're looking at it straight down, you know, the print head is doing all these different things. But it's pretty good at doing curves in that direction. What, what happens when you have curves in the other direction is the staircasing effect. So this is when I, this is what I mean by if you have a curve against the layers, right? Or across the layers. So now if we slice it, you'll see that we have a curve across the layers. And so you get this effect at the bottom where the, where it's basically trying to fit that curve the best that it can. But the issue is that the layer height is going to be stepped over each time. So that's why you get this staircasing effect. And it doesn't matter if it's on the top or the bottom, you still get the same effect. So you get the staircasing up here. Whereas if you use a chamfer in that direction, like here, you can see that this is a lot better looking and more uniform because it's the same amount that it's stepping over each time because this is just a, a slope instead of a, a radius. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm when I'm talking about design where you have your curves with the print lines instead of a, or with the layers instead of against the layers. And if you do have want to add an effect against the layers, I recommend using chamfers in general because usually that looks better and the, the printer can do those step overs in either direction. So even if you did it this way, uh, this is not an issue for most printers because they're supported by each other as they go up. It's not too big of an overhang, especially at 45 degrees. So that is just to be specific about what I'm talking about with the difference in against and with the layer heights. And you can do things like variable layer heights uh, where you tell the uh, settings you want to do smaller layer lines at the top. But in general... It's really better if you can design it uh, where you don't have that that effect, unless that's something that you're going for, which is a different conversation. But that is what I'm talking about with the design of the curves and the chamfers. Number two, deboss instead of emboss. When adding text, I cut out or deboss the letters instead of embossing them, which looks better, especially for smaller text, and is necessary for tip number five. All right, so you're going to do just a new uh, file here just to demonstrate the text example. And these are just arbitrary numbers, doesn't really matter. It's just for demonstration purposes. And then I want to add the text here. I'm just going to say like demo. And one thing to remember is that this box is not constrained. And so you have to remember to constrain this. You can use the existing sketches that you have, or you can dimension those out uh, separately but now it's constrained so finish sketch 
And I'm just going to go ahead and make a body first. And then you have to bring up the sketch again. And so now once you have the sketch, you want to click E for extrude. And it auto selects uh, all of this, uh, basically the whole profile. So you hold command or control, you can deselect that and then just select the text. And so now we have just the text. And so the reason that I like Dball so much uh, is mainly because you can print it in different orientations. So I used to do like negative 0.4 or some small amount. And then you can see here that uh, you can get that emboss. And so you can see here that you can get that debossed into the part. And then now you can print the part face down. You can print the part up. You can even print the part this way. So basically there's no limitation to which way you can print this versus if we did the opposite thing and we uh, embossed it, then you really, you definitely can't print the part like this because then you'd have to have supports all the way around it. So that's not going to work. And then you also uh, really couldn't print it this way either because then you'd also have to have support. So it's really just a lot more flexible and you get a better surface finish, especially when you print it face down. I like that. So that's my tip on this. Again, just deboss. And then another quick tip I'll share here that I didn't mention earlier is you want to have some amount of spacing. So if you go to zero, depending on how big your text is, so if we go down pretty small, sometimes the printer has issues uh, between the, the letters. So I always use about five for spacing at least. And then Usually you can get away with 10 or with five height, but 10 is usually a little, a little bit better. So that is my tip on text. Again, deboss instead of emboss. That's the, the main point there. So let's go ahead and do negative 0.4. And again, it doesn't have to be a very much of a deboss. It would just, I just think it, it does better. It's a lot more flexible. So that's my recommendation for the text. Number three, add clearance. For parts to fit together, there needs to be a little bit of space between them. I add clearance with an offset sketch and add about 0.2 millimeters of space for most designs. Number four, add All right, so now we're going to do the tolerance thing. And this is something that took me a long time to understand. So I'm just going to make this one part, one uh, sketch. And then just to mention it again, just arbitrary finish sketch. And then I'm going to extrude this. I don't know, 10 or so, it doesn't really matter. And the next thing I'm going to do is just shell it here. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this, and then we'll come back to this. So now we have our little um, kind of case here. And so if I wanted to add uh, tolerance to my next part, I would click Create Sketch and then select whatever profile I need, and then select Offset and then find that corner, and now you can just offset the part. So negative 0.2 is usually pretty good, and then we're going to click E for extrude, and then make sure that you select new body here. And so now, if we color them differently, you should be able to see that we have different colors, or two different bodies here. So there's one body, and then there's the other body, and you can see if we zoom in, there's a little bit of space between them. But I would actually not do it this way. So the issue with this is you're going to have a little bit of tight uh, tolerances with this corner because the printers don't really like printing 90 degree angles so much. So what I would actually do is I would come back in the timeline to here, and then I would add a fillet on the corners. And you can make it, you know, whatever size you want. So. Let's make it like 10 or so. And then now let's see what happens with the shell. So now it just, it basically automatically did our shell. So I used to not use shell that much, and that was a mistake. Uh, it's really helpful for stuff like this. And then another quick tip, just while we're here, is if you wanted to shell something all the way through, all you have to do is select the other side. So then you have a full rim, which that's not what we're going for with this one, but just wanted to show that real quickly. And then now, our offset will automatically update to be uh, off of 
that inside uh, realm instead of the, the squared off one. So that's pretty nice. So really the only thing we had to do was change and add that fillet uh, before we shelled everything out. And so now we have a nice rounded corner uh, so that the printer can do that effectively. Another thing I would mention is some of you, if you don't think about it, uh, something that I used to do a lot, and I just want to mention this really quickly. If we go back and delete that fillet that we added and have this re this rectangular uh, part, so this wall thickness is three millimeters. And one thing that I used to do that I didn't realize I was doing was I would make this part the way uh, that you see here, and then I would add the same fillet to every side. And some of you probably already know uh, what's what's going to happen here. So let's add that same 10 millimeter fillet. And, you know, this looks better, but if you look at it, this, this wall thickness is different. And that's because you have to change the fillet size based on the origin. So essentially you would have to make uh, this, you'd have to subtract the wall thickness for the inner fillet to make everything the same. So right now we have 10 millimeters. I'm gonna go ahead and unselect these inner ones real quick. And we set our wall thickness was three. So 10 minus three is seven. So we're going to add another fillet and then make this one seven. And so now you can see that our wall thickness is uniform all the way around. So you can see how that works. So that's just something to be aware of. Uh, something that took me too long to learn, but the way I did that again is your outside radius and then subtract the wall thickness, which is three millimeters, and that'll be your inside radius if you want uniform wall thickness. Or you can forget all about that and just add the fillet before you do the shell, and then it'll kind of calculate all that for you, which is probably the better way to do it. But there might be situations where you need to add a fillet uh, to try to make it uniform and you can't do a shell. So that is my solution for that and something that I think will be helpful for some of y'all. All right, so now on to number four. The angle is a gauge chamfers to the edges. This makes the design look more professional and it reduces the elephant's foot effect so that the parts fit better. I use different chamfer sizes depending on the part, but I always use multiples of my 0 0.2 millimeter layer height. Number five. And so this one's fairly straightforward. Uh, all you have to do is click modify chamfer and you can add it to individual corners but you can also just select the whole face sometimes but just be careful with this because sometimes uh, it can kind of do a little bit more than you want it to do and so i just added a 0.4 millimeter chamfer and you can see how this looks a lot better especially when you print it off and i use 0.4 because i usually use a 0.2 millimeter layer height so then it's not kind of stuck in between layers, if that makes sense. So we're going to have one here that's going to be 0.2 millimeters and then another one here that's 0.2 and then we're going to go straight down. So that's pretty, uh, I think that's a, a good concept to have in mind. And it also, like I mentioned, helps with the elephant's foot effect. So I need to add one down here. Let's hide that and then reselect this one. And what I mean by that is the prints if you don't do something like this the first layer will kind of squish out so it'll kind of do this little foot effect or the elephant's foot where it kind of protrudes out and that can affect some of your tolerances sometimes so that is why i recommend adding chamfers and just in general it looks a lot better so even if it's just 0.4 millimeters sometimes i add one it just depends on the size of the part for one this looks a little bit probably too big but in general, I think 0 0.4, 0 0.6 to 1 is usually a pretty good size. And sometimes you want to do something a little bit bigger than that. But uh, that is my thoughts on chamfers. Make use of the texture print bed. I try to design the parts so that it can print face down to create a nice texture from the print bed surface. Hope this helps. All right, so the texture print bed is, is fairly straightforward. I don't think there's a lot to explain about that. But Something that I would say about that is sometimes that you might even have to design things in slightly like counterintuitive ways. So I think that this tip is kind of best illustrated by my design for the Sumo enclosure. So it took a lot of kind of thought or effort to, to try to make this where most of the parts looked good from the front. And so the way I did that was these parts were all designed where they print with this part face down. So 
there's a lot of different ways it could have gone about designing this, but I print, I made it where all of these would print like that, basically. And then you can see I have like these little inserts behind. So essentially, I don't need hardly any supports for any of these design or any of these parts, which is nice. And then from this side, everything is printed with the layer lines running this way. So all the way across here is a uniform appearance because they're all printed in the same orientation. So it is a 3D printed, you know, enclosure, but the kind of thought and effort that goes into making it look kind of uniform with all the layer lines going the same direction on this, this should all have a pretty te nice texture on the front because of the, uh, the texture print bed. This is also texture. This is also recessed here. And then all of these up here, this is, this prints, uh, against the print bed. So all of these have the same texture as well. So that's a good example of, you know, thinking about what orientation you're going to be printing your parts with. So that was just a quick example that I wanted to run through. And then for those of you that wanted to see how I made the thumbnail, I'll just make that really quickly. Uh, let's see. It's not a clickbait thing, you know? So I think this is about 80. This is probably 60. And a sketch. And I'm going to extrude this. And I'm going to use kind of all the different uh, things that I was talking about earlier. I'm going in a little bit different order than I would typically, but that's all right. So this was the pro and then i like those sizes i'm gonna make all this coincident i think that's actually not constrained here there we go i think that coincident with that finish sketch and so now i'll go ahead and extrude this out negative point four and now i'll add my fillets here and then I'll go ahead and create another sketch back here do my offset of 0.2 and I'm not doing the exact same shell as I did before because I started with the inside body so that's why that is the way it is all right now we can extrude that up and then extrude this other part down. And I should have made this as different components, but I didn't, I think it'll be okay. All right, and then for the last part, let's go ahead and add some color to it. Let's see if we can make the outside black. I think we joined in this last little part here. There we go. Okay, and so this is the exact same size. All right, and so there is the part, and then the last step would be to add the chamfers, 0.4, and then I would just select this edge, or it's gonna select, it's gonna chamfer all of this too. And then you get to this bottom one, like that, and then click OK. All right, so that's about it. If you want access to the file, it'll be available in the school community. And uh, hopefully you learned something for this. Thanks for watching.